Hey guys, I'm here with a response for Mike O, who is celebrating reaching the 2,000 subscriber mark, which is an incredible number, well deserved. I think we could all agree that the quality of his videos is as good as it gets. And I've kind of seen him working behind the scenes when he was putting a video together at a local card show here a few months ago. And I saw that he puts in a lot of effort into making his videos. But yeah, he wanted us to talk about World Series heroes for this contest that he's doing. And with the Yankees, there's definitely a lot of names that can be mentioned. Not trying to brag or anything, but I've just been very fortunate that in my lifetime, they've made it to the World Series a lot. And they've had many different players step up and deliver big moments. I'm sure even the casual baseball fans have heard of some of the names like Jeter and Pettit, Basada, Mariano Rivera, Bernie Williams, you know, Paul O'Neill, Brocious, and so on. But for this, I wanted to give some shine to a pair of players that don't get mentioned quite as much as those other guys, even though they both delivered really crucial hits during a couple of the Yankee championships. First one is... Jim Leritz, who was a catcher for the Yankees back in the 90s, could also play a bit of third base, first base, left field, right field, but was mostly a catcher. Not a big guy at all, could actually be considered kind of small, barely six feet if that, but had some power and I remember he had a very unique batting stance and was a real fan favorite here for years, but cutting to the chase, his big World Series moment was in 1996. The Yankees were trailing in that series two games to one to the Atlanta Braves. And in game four, they were down six to nothing. Had started to come back, cut the lead to six to three. Labritz came up in the eighth inning with a couple runners on. The Braves had brought in their closer at the time, which was Mark Wallers. He was one of the best closers in the game back then. His fastball was easily in the high 90s but Leiris was always a good fastball hitter so that was a pretty good matchup for him I remember in that particular at bat he was fouling off fastball after fastball was right on it each time so Mark Wollers decided to throw a slider or I don't know maybe the catcher called for a slider either way Wollers hung that slider Leiris crushed it for a game tying three run home run and I think that home run changed the entire series even though the Yankees had already won the night before like I said they were trailing there in in that game and up until that home run I just felt like the Braves had a certain swagger about them not arrogance but you could tell they felt like they were gonna win that series they were the defending world champions they had beat up the Yankees pretty bad in the first two games of that series so I think they felt pretty good about their chances but I think that Jim Laird's home run was when they realized that they were in for a difficult series. You could just tell that the Braves were not the same team after that home run. Even though the next few games were still close, consider this little stat here. The Braves had jumped out to a lead in three of the first four games of that World Series. And after that Jim Laird's home run, they never had a lead again for the rest of the series. So I think that home run kind of broke their back, switched the momentum. The Yankees became the confident team. The Braves played a little bit tight. And the Yankees wound up beating them in six games. And obviously a lot of other players had big moments in that series as well. But I just wanted to mention Jim Laird's because to this day he's one of my biggest World Series heroes. And I do have one more to mention. I'll try to be a a bit quicker with this next one and this is a hero from the 2000 World Series against the Mets and it is Luis Soho on a Panini sticker right there and yeah he was pretty much a part-time player utility man for his whole career and so he came up in the ninth inning of game five of that World Series they were at Shea Stadium the Yankees were up in that series three games to one that game was tied 2-2 two to two at that time. There were two outs and an almost unhittable Al Leiter was on the mound. 
I remember that night he pitched one of the best games I ever saw him pitch. He just kind of ran out of gas a bit. Got a couple runners on in that ninth inning. And of all people, Luis Soho came up. Was never a great hitter or a power hitter or anything like that, but just one of those players that knew how to play the game. And all they needed right there was a single. And Soho delivered a beautiful single right back up the middle. Kind of a textbook single, just how you would teach someone to barrel up the ball and smack it right back up the middle. And so a run scored. A bad throw from center field allowed another run to score. And then Mariano closed it out in the bottom of that inning. Even though Mike Piazza almost hit a game-tying two-run home run, but it died in center field and Bernie Williams caught it. And just like that, Luis Soho became an unlikely World Series hero, but one that I'll always remember. So I just wanted to mention him because, again, both of those guys sometimes get forgotten about when people talk about those Yankee teams that won four championships in five years. Leyritz kind of started it in 96 with his three-run home run. Then Soho capped it in 2000 with his RBI single. The Yankees then would not win another championship until 2009 after that. But yeah, that is my response for Mike O. Congrats again, Mike. And I will see you all next time. Again, the 2-2 to Leyritz. The track at the wall, we are tied. Six, six here in the eighth, and it was a slider in the eyes of Lyrics. Franco in the bullpen, and that stick with lighter. 